12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, February 7th. Of course, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. If you go to your local HEB, you'll notice they already have a ton of stuff out ready to go. Flowers, balloons, etc, etc. Yes, exactly. So don't freak out. It's, it's only next Wednesday. You have a week. <laughs> That's right. So people plan to spend nearly $26 billion on Valentine's Day this year. That's about the same as last year. So that's according to the National Retail Federation, and the figure breaks down to an average of nearly $186 a person. And it's nearly $8 more than over the past five years. Of the $26 billion, people are planning to spend a new high of more than $14 billion on spouses or significant others. Wow, that's a record of more than $101 a person. So people are also projected to set spending records on jewelry, flowers, clothing, and evening out this year. You know, Steph, I'm a planner. So oh, last yes, month <laughs> I went ahead and got Valentine's cards. Three of them came out to eight, I just averaged it out, three cards between $20 and $25 yeah, for the, Valentine's the Day cards. Yeah, the cards are expensive too. That comes out to $8.33 a card. Yeah, so sometimes, I mean, it depends on who I'm giving a gift to, but right. like for, for like for my daughter and my husband, mm -hmm. I don't I don't buy cards. I mean, I'll buy like a little gift yeah. and then I'll just, I'll, I'll hand make a card. Sure. <laughs> Love you. That's perfect, <laughs> Love nothing stuff. wrong with it. Save handmade. a couple of bucks there, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then like it's more personal. It is. Yeah. Stephanie is a wonderful gift giver. Aww. She is. In fact, she gave me these yes. earrings. They're little thunderstorms. I thought it was appropriate. That is so yes. cool. They look yeah. beautiful on you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, nice with the periwinkle, right? Yes. Hey, here's another gift. Let's take a look at the pollen count. Pollen count looks good. Mount Cedar is headed in the right direction toward oblivion. It's now only low at 10. Molds have fallen too, low at 160. So a pretty good day for the pollen count today. Take a look at this spectacular sunrise. If you woke up early enough this morning, you saw the beautiful sunrise. This is from Skywatcher. I love this picture because not only do you see the beautiful sunrise in the distance, but you also see a little bit of fog. A uh, sure sign that the humidity is slowly starting to rise. And as we look at the weather headlines today, that's today's headline. Humidity will be rising and it is going to be breezy today with the gusty wind from the south bringing in that Gulf of Mexico humidity. That primes the atmosphere for uh, some muggy conditions on Thursday and Friday with some patchy fog and sprinkles in the forecast on Thursday and Friday. But real rain kind of waits until Saturday when we'll have a few showers out there. It is not going to be a washout for your Saturday, so do not cancel your plans outdoors, but just know that there will be a few showers. If you have outdoor plans, dodging a few of those showers. So we have got a lot to unpack in the forecast. I'll have those details for you coming up. But first, let's get a check of the roads with your traffic authority, RJ Mark. Yes, yeah, Sarah. And I third everything you guys just said, Mark. Yes, the prices of Valentine's Day card. That's it's gone a little crazy. And also, Stephanie is a good gift giver <laughs> for sure. Aww. So fully concur on all that. All right, traffic real quick here. 281 Overlook Parkway. Traffic moving pretty good in that direction. Same situation here. 281 the Quarry North and Southbound traffic moving pretty well there as well. So we do have a couple of things to let you know about if you are about to hit the roads right now. We've had this crash here at Loop 410 at Palo Alto Road that's been delaying some traffic there at the Petite Jurnton Highway for a little while now. So uh, again, keep this in mind if you're headed out on the southwest side. Let's go a little bit north here and we have another crash being reported there at, at 90 eastbound at Nogalitos, a little bit south of downtown. So uh, again, 35 and 90, always kind of a busy area. We have a crash there on the eastbound lanes. A couple other things that you know about some stalls that we have uh, been following over the past 30 minutes or so. I-35 northbound at Riddiman Road. Our drivers on the northeast side, keep this one in mind if you're headed on 35 right now. And south of that, Loop 410 southbound at Rigsby Avenue. Again, these are stalled vehicles, so not causing any major delays. Again, something that uh, might kind of hold up our drivers a little bit if they are headed out at the moment. 1604 military traffic moving pretty good in both directions there. See if we get one more here, 1604, same situation here at Valley Meadow. All right, traffic looking pretty good out there, guys. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Let's look at today's night at nine. 
The Republican effort to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas failed last night, delivering a stunning defeat to House Speaker Mike Johnson. The failure was mainly due to the temporary absence of Majority Leader Steve Scalise and a surprise vote from Democratic Representative Al Green. The House could re-vote as early as today. All of this happening as a bipartisan border plan from the Senate appears to be going nowhere. A plan to support Israel with standalone legislation also failed last night. A planned Senate vote on a controversial measure involving immigration, Israel, and Ukraine is expected to happen today. A historic verdict. The mother of a school shooter found guilty of manslaughter in connection to that shooting. Jennifer Crumley now faces up to 60 years in prison. The jury foreperson said, quote, the thing that really hammered at home is that she was the last adult with the gun, end quote. This decision could set a precedent for years to come. Medical professionals testified before lawmakers yesterday about the basic life-saving drugs they say are often in short supply. Experts say there are more than 250 active medication shortages, including staples like painkillers, anti-infectives, and cancer treatments. Although drug shortages are nothing new, 2023 saw some of the worst in nearly a decade. The Biden administration announced that it will invest in key materials that are the backbone of drug manufacturing. General Motors has recalled thousands of trucks because the tailgate's electronic release system may short circuit when it gets wet. That means the tailgate could unlatch at unwanted times, including when the trucks are in motion. GM plans to notify impacted owners in mid-March. Certain Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra trucks are included in the recall. New funding for the IRS could mean billions in new tax revenues. Federal officials say stepped up enforcement will help the IRS collect over half a trillion dollars in unpaid and overdue taxes over the next decade. Ride hailing company Lyft is looking to lure in more drivers. Now says it will offer guaranteed weekly earnings for drivers. Lyft has about 30% of the market as it tries to compete with Uber. Meta is taking a stand against fake photos. Meta says it will start increasing the labeling of AI-generated images on Facebook, Instagram, and threads. So it's clear the visuals are not real. The move is part of a larger effort to reduce online misinformation. Three big names are joining forces to create a new sports streaming service. ESPN, Fox, and Warner Brothers Discovery will stream events from its networks they own, including the four major U.S. sports. The service's name and pricing will be revealed later this year. And that's today's 9 at 9. Happening right now, the former San Antonio police officer who shot 17-year-old Eric Cantu outside a local McDonald's back in 2022 is in court this morning. You're looking live inside the courtroom right now. James Brennan is charged with aggravated assault by a public servant and attempted murder. We are live streaming this hearing, so you can continue to watch it on our website, quesa.com. Court reporter Eric Hernandez is covering the hearing and will have updates for us later today. Well, in your morning headlines, not a surprise when it comes to the reason why that door plug flew off an Alaska Airlines jet and a controversy between a mom and her kid's school. And it's all about a sticker on mom's car. And if a breakup makes you want to eat, well, Pizza Hut is coming to the rescue. It's good to know. Let's check in with David Sears. You know, a lot of people have, have these times in their lives where it's just like, you know, the only way I can make myself feel better is to eat. Pizza Hut's there for you. Okay. It's Valentine's. This is a great one. Get to that in a second. Hey, the plane's door plug that missing four bolts. That's the preliminary findings by the National Transportation Safety Board. We are talking about the door plug that flew off that Alaskan Airlines 737 Max 9 back on January 5th. The door plug is used if the airline does not want to put an exit door in that space. The plug blew off at 16,000 feet, landed in a guy's backyard, so that piece was salvageable. And there was a little luck involved since there was no one sitting in the seat next to that hole. The report does not blame Boeing. They do not even give a probable cause, but it is just a preliminary report. The FAA grounded the MAX 9 about 90 days, and they also announced some big changes when it comes to overseeing commercial aircraft production. Taylor Swift not happy and even concerned for her safety, at least her lawyers are. It all has to do with tracking her flights. Her lawyers have sent a letter to a 21-year-old college student telling him to cease and desist tracking her private jet plane on social media. The lawyers claim that it amounts to stalking and harassing. They said in the letter by giving out her flight information, quote, you essentially provide individuals intent on physically harming her or 
with nefarious or violent intentions, a roadmap to carry out their plans. His response to the letter he told ABC News that, quote, you should have a decent expectation that your jet's going to be tracked whether or not I do, as after all, it is public information. Sweeney also said that these celebrities need to be transparent. Swift and other celebrities have been criticized for their stance on global warming, but then spewing carbon and leaving a big footprint when they're private jets. Sweeney has also tracked other high-profile people like Elon Musk, who actually tried to pay him to stop. He also tracks Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates. And you can imagine how many jets will be tracked this weekend headed to Las Vegas. Once again, it is not illegal to track these jets. And here we go again. The Internet causes some major problems for the students in a private Christian school and their parents because of the site OnlyFans. Now, the students have been expelled from Liberty Christian Prep in Orlando because their mom has that sticker on her car. It promotes her OnlyFans page, and that site is for adult contents, photos and videos. Folks who make a lot of money, the school and many other parents don't like the fact that the sticker on Michelle Klein's car promotes that site, which they feel amounts to porn. Michelle admits that's what it is, but she shouldn't have to take the sticker off her car. Definitely linked to, you know, explicit content, adult content for sure. My husband and I have this, you know, little wild, you know, behind closed doors lifestyle that we've now decided to share. Why not take the decal off? And that would seem like an easy thing to say for sure. But for me, you know, it's, it supports my family. This provides a, a very comfortable way of life for us. And it's legal. You know, I pay taxes just like everyone else. That's a distraction to my children. And no matter how poorly or how good I parent, porn is there. Yeah, at first the school said she couldn't drive her car on campus unless she took the sticker off. She could drop the kids off across the street. After that conversation, Michelle just put a bigger sticker on her car. Then the school took the next step and expelled the kids, saying Michelle was promoting a pornographic website. The school says the kids can go back if she takes the sticker off the car. First, it was naming cockroaches after your jilted ex for Valentine's Day. Now Pizza Hut is getting into the act. You can get a hot and honey goodbye pie for your ex. The pie comes in a custom box with a broken heart. There's even a little space for the former lover's name. But hold on. Must be a lot of breakups going on in New York, Chicago, and Miami, because that's the only place you can get it. However, you can get a gift card and have Pizza Hut send the card and a breakup message. Oh, my Whoa, gosh. Warrior. That's terrible. So, so there you, you get go. Ghosted. You get pizzaed. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Talk about a pie in the face, huh? Well, yeah. There you go. I guess it depends on the relationship. Maybe it's like, hey, I don't mind having this pizza. <laughs> Thanks. What if you were going to go to Pizza Hut for Valentine's Day? Yeah. And now you're going, well, oh, no. that would be a bad move if well, we still like each other. They also have just the regular heart-shaped pizzas. Yeah. Like, That's like good. just the nice ones. I, I, we got one of those last year. I don't like messing with food. I'd rather just name a Look at the boxes. Goodbye yeah. pie. Yeah. And, it's, and you, it's got a blank yeah. for you to put your, put the name on. With a little heartbreak. Here it comes. The there quote unquote go. recipient. Yeah, Who's that? Casey? With it's love. Kate. Casey, apparently. Casey, and you're in trouble. And yeah, so, you know. <laughs> but I like that. That's, that's, you know. Amelia. Another way to sell pizza. It is. There you go. Thank you, David. All right. <laughs> 9 11 54 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Well, a boy spills hot soup on his foot, but he said it was just a little sting. Now his parents are warning other parents about how just a little sting could cause severe burns. Stanley cups are a huge craze, but are they safe? There are questions about whether they contain lead. 12 Peter's Hyde's Marilyn Mortz looks into it, so stay tuned for that story. Welcome back. Just about 9.15. Get ready to rodeo San Antonio. Tomorrow's opening day of the 2024 San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. It'll run through the 25th, and we have everything you need to know on KSAT.com. That includes ticket information, hours of operation, and a map of the rodeo grounds. We also have a list of all the entertainers performing this year. And KSAT Insiders, don't forget to get your free grounds admission ticket for tomorrow. We're giving you a free ticket for opening day, but you have to be a KSAT Insider member. If you're not one, don't worry, you can sign up now. Enjoy all the perks. And even if you can't make it out to the rodeo tomorrow, you can still watch all the opening night action live right here on KSAT. We will be broadcasting the rodeo at 7 p.m., followed by our, by our Let's Rodeo San Antonio special. That's at 9 p.m. This is with David, Ursula, and Mia. Outside with live cam. Wow. Quite a difference from yesterday. We yeah. saw lots of sunshine and blue skies. Clouds are hanging tough at 915. And here's Sarah Spike. 
Yeah, you know, that is a great picture because it shows the change, right? We've had increasing clouds, increasing humidity. It's going to be breezy today. Those winds are going to bring in the humidity and it's going to prime the atmosphere for our next rain chance. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast. Well, we heard a rumor that yesterday was going to probably be one of the nicest days of the week. I think so, especially yeah. if you love sunshine. Yeah. I think yeah. the sun is going to be out there, but a little bit difficult to come by. I'm starting with the authority radar here because I want to show you, I turned up the intensity of the authority radar. There are pockets of mist right now, especially in northwestern Bear County along that I-10 corridor between 1604 and toward Bernie and then off and near to Holotus uh, and points west of San Antonio. Just seeing some very light mist. Now this is not going to impact everybody. The thing that's going to impact everybody today are the breezier conditions. Take a look at recent wind gusts up in Rock Springs, 31 mile per hour wind gusts around San Antonio. Winds have been gusting up to 15 to 20 miles per hour, even up to 35 miles per hour in Lost Maples. As we head throughout the day, winds are going to turn and strengthen from the south, and that's going to allow for dew points to go up or the humidity to go up. Right now, dew points are in the low 50s. It feels pretty pleasant out there, but by this evening, dew points are going to be in the low 60s, which is noticeably humid, uh, and dew points will stay in the low 60s generally through most of the weekend. So as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly cloudy out there right Right now, a small chance for a sprinkle or some mist. It's going to be in the low 60s by noon. It'll be 63 and breezy. It's mainly afternoon that'll turn pretty breezy with those gusts up to 25 miles per hour. 71 for the high today under mostly cloudy skies, so pretty nice, but you'll definitely notice the mugginess later on this evening. It's going to become cloudy as early as 8 o'clock tonight, and those clouds will stick around for a good portion of tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow and Friday, a chance for some sprinkles, 10% chance of rain. It isn't until Saturday, however, that we see a little bit more organized showers scattered at times. Really not going to be looking at a washout for afternoon activities or outdoor activities on Saturday, but it is something to keep in mind. You'll want to bring the umbrella with you on Saturday in case you get one of those showers, and that'll continue through early Sunday morning, but after Sunday morning, we'll see our rain chances go down into next week. So take a look at the weather setup right now. Now across the state of Texas, we've got some showers across the panhandle, but notice that all the rain is pretty much going up and over San Antonio. That's because there's a ridge of high pressure. High means dry right over Mexico right now. That's what's sending all the rain up and over us right now, and that's why we've been fairly dry. It has been a completely different story out in California where they have received in some places near Los Angeles a foot of rainfall. We've got two low pressure systems, one in Southern California, one in Northern California, and it's the system in Northern California that's going to be bringing us our chance for rain on Saturday. So let me take you through the future cast. You can see all the snowfall that's possible across the Four Corners region by Thursday, but here in San Antonio, we'll really only see a few sprinkles. That's that 10% chance on Thursday and on Friday, but then by by Friday night, a slightly better chance for rain, and on Saturday itself, a few scattered showers. Again, hit or miss in nature, so there will be those that get rain, those that miss out on rain. As far as rainfall totals go, a quarter of an inch to half an inch of rain for those that get some decent rainfall. So putting it all together for you in the planning forecast, notice that the mornings, the next few mornings, are not going to be as chilly as they have been. In fact, we'll be near 60 degrees. You likely will not need a jacket through the remainder of the work week. Uh, and by Saturday, that's our best chance for rain, 40% coverage, 40% chance. A front arrives on Sunday. That's gonna clear out the rain by Sunday, um, right around lunch. And then take a look at next week. Next week's going to be on the chilly side in the mornings and cooler in the afternoons with highs in the 60s. So again, in the pollen count today, it's good that mountain cedar is low. But one of the things about living in San Antonio is when cedar leaves, oak comes in into play. They're, so I've they're got, cousins. They, they, <laughs> they really are you know, not great for me. I'm allergic to both, both? cedar and oh, oak. No. So yeah, from about December through April, I have right. an issue. So coming up, I'll show you when um, oak season peaks. Finally, Maybe something January. free for Valentine's. Yeah. <laughs> Allergies. Something free. Thank you, Sarah. I want that. 920, 54 degrees. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. It's 923. Well, the widely popular Stanley Cups that so many people are obsessed with thanks to TikTok. There are now questions about whether these potentially contain lead. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz gets to the bottom of it. The craze is as big as the cup. The Stanley Quencher is a must-have for millions, trending on TikTok, even getting spoofed on Saturday Night Live. It's more than just a cup. It's a big cup. But it wasn't funny when reports that the tumblers contained lead hit social media. So what's fact and what's hype? Lead poisoning prevention activist Tamara Rubin did some testing. Using XRF technology, we discovered that the exposed ceiling dot on the bottom of the Stanley tumblers was positive for a very high level of lead. She's talking about the ceiling dot. So if you have one of these Stanley tumblers, tip it over. And on the bottom, you see here this nickel-sized button. Underneath that, that's where the leaded material is. Countless consumers have contacted us and let us know that their little button of stainless steel with the logo has fallen off and that they were not aware that there was basically um, a hunk of bioavailable lead. If children are exposed to lead, it can cause developmental problems and lead to a lower IQ. Stanley's website does disclose that its sealing material does include some lead and states, quote, rest assured that no lead is present on the surface of any Stanley product that comes into contact with the consumer nor the contents, unquote. If you own one of these and the bottom button comes off, stop using it. You can contact the company for a replacement. You should also know Stanley's not alone. Consumer Reports says many similar products are made the same way using lead solder. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Probably quite a few of them made in the same factory somewhere. Oh, I'm sure. 925, 54 degrees. There is a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a couple's warning to other parents about the seriousness of burns after their son spilled hot soup on his foot. And how doctors say you can keep your family safe. Plus, he was bonded out of jail by the Texas Organizing Project in a family violence case, only to be then accused of the following year of killing six people, including his own parents. But supporters of TOP and its bail program say it's unfair to criticize the group's efforts to free defendants awaiting trial. Even as records gathered by case and investigate shows a large number of them are later re-arrested for skipping court appearances or accused of more serious crimes. A bail funding organization is not uh, really, uh, especially something that happened years ago or a year ago, uh, is not can't, can't really be held responsible for somebody's future actions. In just a few minutes, a closer look at the impact of the Right to Justice program and how often defendants end up back in jail after getting a second chance at freedom. It is National Burn Awareness Week, and one San Antonio family is sharing a warning to other parents after their son was seriously hurt. Tiffany Huertas talked to them and a local doctor about ways to keep you and your family safe year round. We were pretty shocked about it all. During school lunch, a cup of soup accidentally spilled on 11 year old Rex Rohde's foot. It didn't hurt much, just a little sting on the foot. But that sting would become a big problem. And the fact that you couldn't see the burn necessarily, you really didn't know how bad it was until it manifested and created more of a problem. It wasn't boiling hot or even warmed to the touch of his skin. So he kind of just looked at his foot, took his sock and shoe off. It just felt wet and he put it back on. That liquid caused Rex severe burns. He underwent a few surgeries at the University Health Level 1 Pediatric Trauma and Burn Center. We had to have a first um, surgery for a surgical debridement to kind of clean up the burn. We had another surgery where he received a cadaver graft, which basically prepped his body for receiving his uh, donor graft. The week after that is when they then went in and did a third surgery where they um, actually took skin from his thigh and gave him a graft, his own skin graft to his foot. Today, Rex is feeling better, but wears a compression sock and they monitor his foot. Dr. Christopher Crane, a trauma surgeon, says unfortunately, he sees burns like these often. Something that's very, very hot can only be in touch with the skin for a brief second and cause a deep, deep burn. Whereas something that's, you know, not quite as, as hot that sits and sits on the skin in contact for a prolonged period of time will cause the same burn, just takes longer for it to develop. 
Dr. Crane says if you or your child get burned, remove any clothing in the affected area to expose it. Run it under cool water for 10 to 15 minutes to remove any kind of grease, oils, or food particles from the affected area to prevent further burning. He says there are steps you can take to prevent burns, including use extreme caution when cooking or using a microwave. Set your water heater to 120 degrees so it doesn't get too, too hot when you turn the faucet on or somebody accidentally turns the wrong faucet on. When you're cooking um, at, the, at the oven or stove, using the back burners and keeping the handles pointed away from the, the, uh, the, the front. The Rody family hopes their story helps someone. So I think we've learned in our household that when it comes to food and drink, if you spill something on you, whether it's cold or hot, just wipe it off. If your clothes are damp, change them. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Look out there with a live cam. Not too bright and sunny, but 55 degrees is tolerable, Sarah. Yeah, we're seeing waves of clouds move in and out of San Antonio. So peaks of sunshine, but definitely a change from the totally sunny skies that we've had over the last couple of days. Let's go ahead and take a look outside with that live cam. It is chilly this morning. It's 55 degrees, but this is actually the coolest morning we're going to have for a while in San Antonio as humidity is on the rise. 52 in Bernie, 49 still in Los Maples, 51 at Stinson and 56 in Pleasanton. Humidity on the rise because winds will be picking up from the south, gusting up to about 25 miles per hour today, bringing in that Gulf of Mexico moisture and priming the atmosphere for a chance of rain. So today humidity is going to be rising and it is going to be breezy. Will be muggy for the remainder of the week with fog and uh, some sprinkles Thursday and Friday, and that'll lead to a few showers being possible on Saturday. So we're going to talk about that chance for rain coming up in a bit. I want to show you the pollen count looks good today. Molds are low. Mountain cedar on its way out. Mountain cedar season officially ends or usually ends rather close to Valentine's Day and mountain cedar is very low. So enjoy this brief respite because I got to tell you oak season right around the corner. It starts close to Valentine's Day and peaks in early April before ending by the middle of May. More on that chance for rain Saturday coming up. Thank you. On uh, Transcad right now, we are looking around town. The only accident I see on the tech stop page is eastbound Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. It's only affecting the left shoulder. A couple of stalled vehicles, but that's it for around town. Back to the headlines, a group called the Texas Organizing Project, or TOP, is at the center of controversy. That's after a defendant they bailed out of jail was later accused of killing his parents right here in Bear County before murdering four more people in Austin. But a month long investigation by KSET investigates found that issues with TOPS bail program don't end with Shane James. Nearly 30% of defendants bonded out by TOP were later taken back into custody in the same case. As Dylan Collier reports, others were later charged with more serious crimes. In October 2022, inside this souvenir shop at Historic Market Square, Security cameras were rolling when three men broke through a window in the middle of the night and stole more than $5,000 worth of jewelry. It was no more than two minutes that were in here, they were out. The business owner asked us to conceal his name and the name of his store, which has been in his family for nearly five decades. Uh, man, I totally felt uh, violated of my rights of, you know, of everything I work for hard, you know, to, to you know, accomplish and have and run this business. San Antonio police were later able to identify one of the suspects as convicted felon Benjamin Sanchez Jr. The cross tattoo on his face and unique ears that protrude out to the sides of his head match the man in the red face covering in the video. But just 11 days after Sanchez was booked into jail, records show he was bailed out by the Texas Organizing Project. Months later, in April, Sanchez picked up new charges of burglary of vehicles and burglary of a habitation by force. Last summer, he was sentenced to six years in prison in the burglary of a habitation case. I believe that they should not be bailing out uh, dangerous people like that. This is not something that's, you know, going to be accepted in society. In past comments, Top says its Right to Justice program counters a bail system that disproportionately targets low-income Black and Latino Texans. In the fall of 2021, 
The group celebrated passing the $1 million mark in bonds paid for defendants. A vast majority of those funds, more than 978,000 bucks, was distributed here in San Antonio. Bear County defendants in at least 196 cases have been bonded out by top since the sheriff's office began tracking these statistics in October 2022. Case that investigates found 29.6% of the time defendants in these same cases were taken back into custody, often for failing to make a court appearance. That figure jumps to nearly 40% when you toss out defendants set free within the last several months. And Sanchez isn't the only one to pick up new charges. After Scott Buckholz was accused of pointing a gun at a family member, Top bailed him out last June. Just a week later, a warrant was issued for his rearrest after he failed to show up to court. Buckholz was released again from jail in late July, once he served time in the gun case. But in September, was again arrested after Bear County Sheriff's officials said he sprayed mace in the face of his own mother and a uniformed deputy during a dispute at a far northeast Bear County home. Can't really be held responsible for somebody's future actions. San Antonio criminal defense attorney Shannon Locke applauds the efforts of the Texas Organizing Project, saying the group deserves credit for keeping some people from entering the margins of society. It is incredibly difficult uh, to figure out uh, who's going to be a problem in the future and who's not. I, I don't think they should have stayed in jail. Uh, and I think that as a society, as a constitutional republic, as a free people, what we want to do is we want to give people the chance to see what happens next. Top posted bond for Shane James after he was arrested on three charges of misdemeanor family assault in early 2022. James cut off his ankle monitor a day after getting out of jail and despite warrants being issued for his rearrest, remained free another 21 months before officials said he went on his multi-county murder spree. Sheriff's deputies could have taken James into custody in late August, just months before the killings, but chose not to during the mental health call in an effort to avoid what Sheriff Javier Salazar described as a possible violent confrontation. Locke said the incident illustrates a bigger public safety concern than defendants being bailed out, the issue of unresolved warrants. There is, uh, in, in my opinion, a real problem when people are involved in the criminal justice system and they don't know what's going to happen next. After James's arrest in Austin on capital murder charges, Top released a statement condemning the violence. Quote, we must address both the immediate impact of this tragedy and the broader implications for our bail program. The group said it would conduct a comprehensive review of the program and its processes. Top officials did not respond to multiple emails from KSAT seeking an on-camera interview for this story. Records confirmed Top twice bailed out Hussein Muhammad, who has racked up seven criminal charges in Bear County since the group originally posted bond for him in November 2022. They include a felony burglary case early last year in which Muhammad was accused of damaging several windows, doors, and toilets in a residence, causing the home to flood. After prosecutors reduced the charge, Muhammad was arrested again, this time for theft, only to be bailed out by top last November. He has since been arrested two additional times. For Case that Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. The Texas Organizing Project, or TOP, has previously said it has a thorough and rigorous screening process to determine who is eligible for bail with a focus on misdemeanor offenses. A case that investigates found TOP bailed out defendants in Bear County charged with crimes including felony vehicle theft, felony failure to stop and render aid causing serious bodily injury or death, and felony family violence choking. You can read more about this investigation on KSAT.com. And the time now is 941 and 56 degrees for now. Our Spurs are kicking off their rodeo road trip tonight in Florida, and we're waiting to see what moves they might make as the NBA trade deadline fast approaches. We'll be back. There they are, our friends, the Flamingos. They're cooling off right now. They're usually on that island, aren't mm, they? It must be something to eat on the other bank. It's <laughs> true. A they, lot of them. Oh, and they're behind the tree, too. Right. They know the humidity is 
Movement. Look at this Egyptian oh. goose. The goose oh, yeah. literally up to say hi. Waddling hi, up to us and tripped on something. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. oh. He was so excited to talk to us. And now ready for its close up. Can oh, they hear us out there? I mean, it feels like yeah, he no, does. Like, yeah, never mind. <laughs> feels like he can. And you can see that we're dealing with peaks of sunshine and yeah. clouds mm -hmm. out there. See right some there. shadows. It yeah. is, it's always a great day to visit the zoo. So yes. pretty nice. All right, so we are going to be gearing up, guys, for. A total eclipse. We are so excited. In October, we had an annual yeah, eclipse where you got the neat. ring of fire around the uh, this moon, and now we're going to have a total solar eclipse that'll move through parts of San Antonio. We're starting the countdown. It's 61 days away. On Monday, April 8th, around 1.30 p.m., the moon will totally block out the sun for parts of San Antonio in the hill country. You'll actually be able to take off those protective glasses during totality, which is pretty neat. And the sky will grow completely dark for some folks. And this is a look at the path of totality from Eagle Pass all the way up to Dallas. Now, the uh, areas in red will be under totality, but the blue line here is the longest time in totality. If you're outside of totality, a partial eclipse will be visible everywhere else. But for us, totality is Del Rio, Brackville, Eagle Pass, Uvalde, Lakey, Rock Springs, Bandera, Kerrville, Comfort, Bernie, Canyon Lake, Bulverde, and parts of San Antonio, the northwestern section and western sections of San Antonio. So areas like Stone Oak, the Rim, the airport will be right on the cusp of totality. Leon Valley, SeaWorld, Castroville, all of those areas. We are your Eclipse Authority. Case that is your Eclipse Authority. We'll continue to keep you posted. April 8th around 1.30 p.m. A beautiful sunrise this morning. This was out in Canyon Lake. Thank you so much for sending in your pictures to our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. And today's clouds and temperatures show rounds of clouds moving in. So it's going to be a mostly cloudy day. It's cool right now. Kerrville 53, 57 in Del Rio, 55 in Catula and in San Antonio, 52 in Rio Medina, 55 in Castroville, 52 in New Braunfels. We're going to have a mostly cloudy day and wind Winds will be picking up. So take a look at noon. It's going to be 63, mostly cloudy winds from the south at about 15 miles per hour, but we could see a few gusts of up to 25 miles per hour. Afternoon high of 71, and it's going to get very cloudy this evening, completely cloudy by 8 o'clock, and temperatures will be holding steady at 60 degrees from 10 p.m. Now those winds, which are going to be breezy, are going to increase the humidity. So we'll be pretty muggy, especially tomorrow, Friday, and then and by Sunday morning, a front moves through and that'll dry out the atmosphere again for us. So speaking of highs today, I want to mention that it is going to be fairly warm toward Laredo. It'll be nearly 80 degrees, a little bit more sunshine there. Generally, though, upper 60s in the hill country, Kerrville, Canyon Lake, 71 in Del Rio, 73 in Yavaldi. Here's a look at the weather setup. It has been pretty dry because of a high pressure system, which is over Mexico right now. That's what's really kept out our rain chances, but you can see that some Pacific moisture is being streamed in from the Pacific Ocean, and that's why we're dealing with an increase of cloud cover today. Meanwhile, off to the west, they have been dealing with so much rain in California. Parts of Los Angeles have seen of 12 inches, one foot of rainfall just within the last few days. Two low pressure systems, one in Southern California moving out, one in Northern California moving in, and it's a system in Northern California that's going to give us the opportunity for some rain on Saturday. Taking a look at the future cast, just a few sprinkles possible tomorrow and Friday, but by Friday night, some showers and Saturday we'll have scattered showers out there. Not everybody's going to see rain all day on Saturday. It's going to be hitter miss about 40% coverage. And we're going to see some rain carry into Sunday morning as well. But when that front moves through on Sunday, that's going to clear skies and set up a nice weekend next week. But pretty chilly too in the mornings. We'll be getting down into potentially the upper 30s by Tuesday morning. But until that front moves through, know that it is going to be a little bit muggier. We're going to have mild mornings and mild afternoons, so you're not going to need the jacket the next few days. Just be prepared for a little bit of morning fog, a little bit of drizzle, and some sprinkles as well. By Saturday, though, better rain chance for us all. Right. all. Well, that's not too bad, especially because we, we need the rain. It is, and, and as far as rainfall totals go, quarter of an inch to half an inch of rain. So not a big rain event for us, but something. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk Spurs.
Silver and Black are in Miami to start the rodeo road trip tonight. And at this point, the NBA season, all the talk is about the trade deadline coming up tomorrow at 2 p.m. That means the window for teams like the Spurs to make any in-season moves is closing fast. We'll wait to see what the Spurs do, if anything. Meanwhile, it's the Spurs at the Heat tonight at 6.30, followed by Spurs at the Magic in Orlando tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Time now, 9.50 and 56 degrees for now. You may have seen some sneak peeks already. We're talking about this year's Super Bowl commercials <laughs> when we come back. As you know by now, the big game is Sunday, but many people tune in for what they call the truly important stuff, the commercials. <laughs> We're already getting a sneak peek at some of them, and as ABC's Danny New reports, many of them feature a whole lot of stars. I know why you're here. You do? 20 years after the finale of Friends, and we're finally getting a Ross and Rachel reunion. Except in this Super Bowl Uber Eats ad, Jennifer Anderson's having a little trouble putting a face to the name. Jen. Hey. Hi. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Can we not? And how about one more TV reunion? Parks and Recreation's Nick Offerman and Aubrey Plaza riding dragons together in the name of Mountain Dew. I can have a blast anytime, anywhere. And with anyone? <laughs> During this year's Super Bowl, we can expect to see plenty of big names. Kate McKinnon, Tina Fey, LL Cool J, with advertisers paying an estimated $7 million for a 30-second slot. Just this. You look like the Pringles guy. No, I don't. But that's not counting the production costs, like hiring Chris Pratt to transform into Mr. P. Do I get a cut? And we'll even enjoy a cameo from a real-life couple, Ben Affleck poking fun at his instant meme Hall of Fame induction when he looked very bored next to his wife, Jennifer Lopez, at the Grammys last year. J-Lo shared this to Instagram. He's bored. No. Studying. Always watching. You can do that. Why well, could it be? What's going on, baby? I had this crazy dream you're gonna laugh. I had come up with, like, some beats, and then you were like... Maybe you should put that on the record. I even had like a persona like J-Lo or like B-Lo. That's the bad version, obviously. Do you have any time today? I understand. Danny New, ABC News, New York. Okay. Yeah. More to come Sunday night. Let's check out Traffic Authority right now, see what's happening around the roads of San Antonio. Morning commute is now over. The only accident I see still working uh, came out around 9 this morning. Eastbound 410 at Jackson Keller. The shoulder is still blocked. Sarah? Yeah, we are going to be pretty mild today with a high of 71. It is going to get pretty breezy, though, uh, with gusts up to 25 miles per hour. Chilly mornings kind of out the door throughout this rest of the week. We'll be near 60 degrees Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning. Speaking of Saturday, other than a few sprinkles on Thursday and Friday, Saturday is our best chance for rain. We'll have a few showers here and there during the weekend through Sunday morning, but a front clears things out, allows for cooler weather next week. I like it overall. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Sarah. Have a great day.